Radio audience, television audience, as Rothrock's first pitch is downstairs. We're underway at 6.02 p.m. Eastern, 58 degrees here in Gainesville. Gators in the orange tops, blue pants with the blue sleeves. Gator head logos on either side of those jersey tops. Next to Edwards, twists the hips, takes high and away. Two balls, no strikes. The high white socks with the orange and blue stripes, the blue pants. Oklahoma State with the orange batting helmets, the white pinstripe uniforms with the orange numerals on the front and the back, the high orange stirrup socks. 2-0 to Edwards, dips low and outside. Three balls, no strikes. What a season for Talon Edwards to start through eight games. The sophomore from Moore, Oklahoma. This is her 29th consecutive start. Awaits the 3-0. Flips the outer black for a strike. Will Lopez, the audible strike call. Jose Chaparro at first. Eric Salgado is over at third. Gators at eight and one. They've won seven straight entering tonight. Three one. Ball high above the letters. And Edwards walks on five pitches. And not really an issue this year. You know, last year, the, the staff for the Gators had so many issues with walks. And credit these freshman, freshman pitchers, they have not offered up a lot of free passes this season. 31 innings for Keegan Rothrock, just seven walks, if that tells you anything. Here's Claire Tim, left-handed swinger. Corner infielders in, first tour is grouped in for a strike down center. Take a look at the repertoire for Rothrock, three-time Indiana Gatorade Player of the Year. Rise, screw, curve, and change. From Whiteland, Indiana. Twist the waist, so one. Swing and a miss, went up the ladder. Tim down to the count, 0-2. Claire Tim getting the start in right field tonight. 4.58 hitter, homer, and four runs driven in. Has a total of four extra base hits. Tight to the plate here for the 0-2. In the other batter's box, one ball, two strikes. Tim, a player that has really just emerged this year as a freshman, only three starts, but all of a sudden she's starting for the seventh time this year, hitting 458, and her last four games, she's compiled two hits in each of them. One ball, two strikes, here it comes. Outside corner, strike three. Rothrock dots that lower outside corner and picks up her first strikeout, there's one away. Just such a good pitch mix for Rothrock, this one. Grazes the outer edge, it's a good frame from Erickson, could have been called off the plate, but uh, first strikeout for Keegan Rothrock. So no score, runner at first, one out. First one to the right-handed hitting Carly Godwin, a strike. Native of North Carolina in her freshman year. Part of that youth that has been brought in by Kenny Gajewski. Solid freshman class, much like the Gators. Getting the start at first here tonight. Bats with Edwards at first after a leadoff five-pitch walk. Scoreless in the first inning. 0-1. Caught on a miss. 0-2. Amidst a 16-game road trip start the season. That's kind of wacky, ain't it, for Oklahoma State? They started their season in California, now in the Sunshine State. 11 games here in the state of Florida. Rothrock belt tie set, 0-2. Swing and a slash foul back and right. And no one's going to appreciate that road trip in Flo through Florida more than uh, good old Lexi Kilfoyle, who's from Land Lake, So she gets to go play in Tampa soon. That's next weekend. Yeah, after this game tonight, Oklahoma State still has six games left in the state. They're going to head down to the University of South Florida for an invitational. The runner at first, 0-2 count. Carly Godwin, even stance, right-handed hitter. Here's the pitch. Foul back to the screen. And just look at what Kenny Gajewski has done here at Oklahoma State. They've been to four consecutive Women's College World Series. Only one of two teams in the country to do so. They've been there 15 times as a program. That's tied for fifth in the nation. The 0-2 dips low. One ball, two strikes. Last four seasons, 52 and 20 in Big 12 play. Of course, they have Goliath sitting right next to him in Oklahoma in the Big 12. Not for much longer. One, two. Caught out and miss. Godwin goes down on strikes, back-to-back -back K's for Rothrock after the leadoff walk here in the first. And there's two gone here for Caroline Wong. Oh, it's a great pitch by Rothrock. Went in on Godwin, and there's nothing she could do with that pitch. So there's two away. 
Edwards at first, scoreless top of the first inning. Right on right, first to Wong. High and away, one ball, no strikes. Caroline Wong, one of the better additions in the transfer portal in the country. Caroline Wong is the ace son, two-time ace son player of the year. Right now leading the team in hits. Pitch, swing and a miss, blowing right past her. That was the rise ball. Coming in at 67 miles an hour. Such a great pitch from Rothrock. One ball, one strike. Next to Wong. Chopper out in front of home plate, foul ball. <laughs> Jocelyn Erickson going for the tag there just in case it was in fair territory. You never know. Save herself the throw. Wong currently on a eight game hit streak. That's a team best. Has at least one extra base hit in four of her last five. Rothrock readies, one, two. Swing and a jam job, flare to second. Mia Williams over to a left little hop, skip, and a jump to make that catch. Moving over to first, and that retires the side. In the inning, a against Lexi Kilfoyle. We'll bring you her numbers up until this point. Right on left, first of the slender left-handed hitter. Falby takes low. Kilfoyle, the third team All-American from a year ago. This is just her second start, but eighth appearance, three and two record, 2 8 4 ERA over 12 and a third, nine hits, six runs, five earned, two walks, and 10 strikeouts. Infield in across the board for the lefty slapper, foul tip into the glove to strike one. Kilfoyle, like Nevada mentioned, from Lando Lakes, Florida, so a chance to play in her home state for an extended period of time. Somebody who had undergone hip surgery at her time in Alabama in June of 2022. Rocks and fires. Swing and a chipper foul off to the left near the on deck circle for the Gators where Skylar Wallace takes some practice cuts, one and two. Heavy drop in the 70s for Kilfoyle, off speed that tunnels like a drop, a changeup, and a screw. So good luck to the Gator bats tonight. She's really good. 6-2 right-hander, third base side for the one-two. Check swing flare over a stagnant Tim Walton, fouled along the left field side. And she's been really good for a long time, Lexi Kilfoyle. You mentioned she's from Land Lakes. Well, she went to the academy at the Lakes and was a two-time Florida Gatorade Player of the Year there. Third team All-American last year. First team All-Region, second team All-Big 12. Come set and fires. Darts low and away. Falby, two balls, two strikes. Last year, 2-1-9 ERA, won 16 games. Made 19 starts, 11 complete games. That, of course, is staff that had Kelly Maxwell, who made a lot of news this offseason, transferring to Oklahoma. Pinwheels the 2-2, off speed, swung through for strike three. That's a sword right there for Kendra Falby. Goes down on strikes. 53 miles an hour, that just dropped in there. And Falby just out in front. Kilfoyle using the off speed to perfection for out number one. You ever seen the old Bugs Bunny cartoons? One, two, three, you're out. One, two, three, that was a Bugs Bunny change right there. <laughs> Alexi Kilfoyle. Scoreless game as we're in the bottom of the first. The reigning SEC Player of the Year, Skyler Wallace stands in. First pitch to the left-handed hitter, knee-high strike, 0-1. Audible groans from the crowd. There you see the reaction from Skyler Wallace just getting some affirmation as to where that pitch was. Her numbers off the charts, as you'd imagine. 538, three homers and 12 driven in. A one to her. Wallace flails through strike two. That was a home run half. That's that drop you talk about from Kilfoyle. Nothing really Wallace can do with that pitch. Still trying to get a good swing off, and that's what Skyler Wallace does best. She just gets good swings off consistently and hits the ball a mile. 14 of her first 26 to start the year. The 0-2, a changeup, nabs the inner half, and Wallace goes down on strikes. Kilfoyle pulls the string, impressive, two batters in. So Kilfoyle attacks Wallace with the off speed, then goes drop, and then another changeup. This one just catches the knees. Beautiful pitch, and those are two really good hitters to get on two strikeouts, and Kendra Falby and Skyler Wallace. That's one of those, you tip your cap, and you head to the dugout. Two backwards Ks. Now I should say, actually, Falby's was a frontwards K, went around on a check swing. Here's Jocelyn Erickson, takes a strike, Nevada, she was announced the SEC Co-Player of the Week for her. Everybody, according to Tim Walton, had been sleeping on Jocelyn Erickson. 
transfer from Oklahoma has played, of course, Oklahoma State a lot in the past, last season to be exact. The 0-1 flinches at it, takes low and away. I believe you put it best. You can keep sleeping on Jocelyn Erickson if you'd like. It'd be silly <laughs> to do that, but yeah. 13 runs driven in in the last four games, and that's that's good enough to earn your SEC Player of the Week. Those two games in the Bubbly Invitational multi-hit performances had eight runs driven in. 1-1 one, one is slashed on a line to third, caught by Talon Edwards, and that retires the side. So both pitchers are dealing 1-2-3 two, and three for the Gators. They go down a 1-2-3. Two, two Here's Michaela Wark, right-handed hitter. No score as we head to the top of the second. Rothrock pinwheel strike one down center. Rothrock worked around a five-pitch walk to lead off the first inning, then strikeout, strikeout, and a lazy pop fly to second in the top four of the Oklahoma State lineup. 0-1. Just missed the outside corner, count even at one ball, one strike. We welcome in the radio audience as well as the TV audience, so if you're wondering why I'm describing everything, that <laughs> is why. It's very to the point. I like it. 1-1 one, one toss. Just missed a low inside corner. Audible groans from the Gator fans. A lot of those wearing heavy jackets, some blankets for those fans here in attendance. Rothrock's next. Off the inside corner, three balls and a strike. So very similar to how that first inning started. A three ball count to Talon Edwards. Now Rothrock again has fallen behind three and one. Looking at that watch to get the signs in. 3-1. Foul tipped off Erickson at home plate. Gators defensively have done away with the wristbands. They have a tablet in the dugout. And if you look on that left wrist of Keegan Rothrock, you can see a wristwatch that what looks to be a wristwatch has those defensive signals that get sent in. She's not checking text messages, I promise. Payoff pitch to Michaela Ward. Here it comes. Swung on and miss. Rothrock third strikeout. She's locked in early, one away in the second. That is Michaela Wark's first strikeout of the year, and it is because of a good pitch on the outer half by Keegan Rothrock and just a late swing from Wark. So battles back from a 3-1 count. There's one away in a scoreless top of the second inning. And here's right-handed hitting Rosie Davis. First one to her. Smacks that glove of Erickson off the inside corner. Freshman from Readyville, Tennessee. Pitch clock reads six, now at five. 1-0. Foul back to the mesh. One ball, one strike. Rosie Davis entering in, hitting 500, tied for a team best. He's had four multi-hit games. Oklahoma State coming off the Clearwater Invitational. And they had some really tough games. 1-1. Slashed on a line. That's snagged by Ava Brown just inside the bag at first. That swing from Rosie Davis as Brown takes away an extra base hit. There's two gone. Yeah, Oklahoma State really challenged themselves uh, in that tournament. As you see the on the TV side, you see the replay. Another line out we had <laughs> last inning, uh, Jocelyn Erickson. But you look at the games that Oklahoma State played. I mean, that LSU game on Saturday was just wild. 7-6, LSU walking it off with that ball that hit off the shortstop's glove and trickled into center. Here's Katie Lott, stands in the right side, takes a strike down the middle, all in one. No score, two outs, bases empty, top of the second inning. They lost to Georgia 7-4, but they out-hit the Dogs 8-7. Pitch. Cruises over the outside corner, nothing in two. The offense was doing crazy things in Clearwater. Georgia also beat FSU 20-10. Uh, to 10. I did see that. Are, are we sure that wasn't the Knowles versus the Bulldogs in football? Are we completely convinced? Uh, that, there was a lot more <laughs> score for Georgia in that one. 0-2. Oh, Off the outer edge. One ball, two strikes. Seven total runs for Georgia in that game in the fifth and the sixth, so they scored seven unanswered. They lost to LSU in walk-off fashion their last time on the diamond was Beth Torina's 500th win, the LSU head coach. One-two to luck. Swing and a miss. Rothrock picks up her second of the inning and her fourth of her start. So the freshman with her biggest start, the team was fired up about it. 
The Gators, that is, and Oklahoma State a chance to get in what is their ninth game of the year at 6-2. Gators 8-1. First pitch to Reagan Walsh, right-handed hitter. Kilfoyle's delivery is low and in. One ball, no strikes. Okay, we took the trip to Jacksonville Tuesday. That was Reagan Walsh's best game of the season so far. Three hits, tied her career high. And drove in four, had that laser homer to center. Hitting fourth. Next one to her. Blazes off the inside corner, 2-0. We've seen her, Reagan Walsh, as low as seven in this lineup. She's back to where... She's more accustomed to, at least last season, hitting a lot in that cleanup spot. 320 hitter, three homers, and seven runs driven in. Now fielders, medium depth, straight up. 2-0. Downstairs, ball three. More into Lexi Kilfoyle's journey. Spent three seasons at Alabama under head coach Patrick Murphy. Final year 2022 was really fighting through injuries. Nine and three that final season, just north of a three ERA. Calls for time here. Had hip surgery in June of 2022. Had to recover from that. When she put her name in the transfer portal, Lexi and Kenny Gajewski had a prior relationship when Kenny was recruiting her to Florida when he was an assistant here. The 3-0 is ball four down in the basement. Four straight out of the zone to the cleanup hitter, Reagan Walsh. One on, nobody out in the home second. So Kilfoyle, who came in with just two walks to 10 strikeouts, that was just her third walk in 12 and her 13 in the third innings now. Here's Corby Otis. Slight open stance, bunts one foul from the right side. Corner infielders crash in for strike one. And then last year for Kilfoyle, sharing a staff with Kelly Maxwell, those 16 wins, tied for a team lead. You know, had that sparkling ERA helping bring this team to the World Series. Next one to Otis, flying away. Very accomplished in her time in Alabama, but was stationed behind Montana Fouts for the longest time with the Crimson Tide. Belt tie set, Kilfoyle's 1-1. Change up, wanders outside corner, strike two. Yeah, it's funny to, to hear about that, how she ended up picking Oklahoma State because uh, Kenny Gajewski didn't actually call her. It was actually Lexi who had to call up Coach Gajewski and say, hey, I want to come play for you. <laughs> One, two coming. Otis, late swing and miss, goes down on strikes. Third strikeout for Kilfoyle, so bounces back after that four-pitch walk. There's one out in the bottom of the second, no score. This pitch from Kilfoyle, perfectly placed outside corner, cut and miss from Otis, and yeah, that's three for Lexi. I think her last few outings have been sort of a mis mixed bag, dominated UCLA, struggled in some games in Clearwater, but she is on her game tonight. This is a team that run ruled UCLA 9-1 earlier this year out west. First pitch to Ava Brown, getting the start at first tonight, takes a strike. Lower outside corner, 0-1. And Oklahoma State are going to use a lot of the pitch by committee strategy this year, at least early to start the season. The 0-1 slashes just off the plate, one ball, one strike. You see a lot of box scores. If you look through the box scores this year for the Cowgirls, a lot of three, maybe even four pitchers at any given time. They, they use that strategy, at least to start the year, of having an opener. And you might even see most games Kilfoyle come in in the fourth inning and try to close the final frames as Brown swings through a changeup for strike two. This is only the second start for Lexi. I think she's been really effective in that reliever role, and they just have so many different looks they can throw at you, especially when you think of their freshmen like Katie Coots, uh, Sailor Davis, both have a lot of upspin. Coots obviously has been the one more used, but a lot of different looks for Kenny Gajewski. One, two, plate word. Dives low. Two balls, two strikes to the freshman Ava Brown. The reigning National Gatorade Player of the Year. Two of those in this nationally acclaimed number one ranked freshman class. And Ava Brown, a two-way player. 2-2 two -two coming. Change up is cued to the right side. Charging in was Davis, but it's the first baseman. Godwin who fields, throws to second low. That trickles away into center. 
A feet first slide of save for Reagan Walsh. I believe that hit the back of Reagan Walsh and Brown's gonna reach. It was in no man's land between first and second. On the TV side, taking a look at the replay, that's a wicked spin off the end of the bat. And Godwin would cut off the second baseman. Davis throw to second low, so now the Gator is set up here with two on and one out. There wasn't really a good option for Godwin because if she tries to go to first with it, I don't think anyone's there in time because it was hit so softly. And she had to go to second, couldn't get the job done. I believe they're gonna score that as the Gator's first hit. Here's Ariel Kowalewski. Left-handed hitter takes a strike down center. So first and second, one out, no score, bottom of the second inning. Gators this year have scored first eight times. Oh, one, just slowing outside. One ball, one strike. Kowalewski's had a great start to her year, getting the start at third base tonight. Just over 300, a homer and five runs driven in. Kilfoyle winds and fires. Shot foul on first. Yeah, you think back to that opening weekend for Kowalewski in that Tampa tournament at USF. She just really burst onto the scene. She's cooled off a bit since then, but shown plenty of potential really early in her Gator career. First and second for the Gators, one, two. Change up, flutters high and in. You see Kowalewski a couple of times hesitant on whether to offer up the swing. Yeah, got locked up. That's because of the huge difference in speed between the drop and the change from, from Kilfoyle. So many different speeds that are coming in from her. 2-2 two -two with one out in the bottom of the second pitch. Swing to chopper along first, rolls foul. Runners retreat back to first and second. Yeah, got to give it to Ariel. It's a really good bat against a really good pitcher, and this is what you want for a freshman in Kowalewski, for her to see the top level of competition so early in her career and be able to battle and show some tenacity and toughness. That's what a matchup like this does for this very young Florida roster. It gives them some elite competition. 2-2 Two -two coming. High and away. Count full now. Gators trying to get something cooking here with one out in the second. Ariel Kowalewski from Richmond, Texas. Tried dancing, gymnastics, basketball. 3-2. Change up, whipped in the air to shallow center. Scotland David comes in, was playing shallow, makes the catch. And both runners retreat to first and second. Now two gone, and the score was second. It's funny, the story of Ariel Kowalewski, not too dissimilar from uh, the pitcher in the circle, Lexi Kilfoyle, who tried so many different sports. Finally, even after thinking she was going to quit softball, decided to keep with it when her dad offered to coach her. And uh, I think it's a good good thing that both players decided to stick with softball. Here's Mia Williams, right-handed swinger. First pitch, low and away. One ball, no strikes. Tough start offensively to Mia Williams. Tenure as a Gator was over first 12, but started to get out of it. And that lone two games in the Bubbly Invitational. First career hit, first career RBI. The 1-0, south of the knees, two balls, no strikes. Both of her first career hits have actually driven in runs. She had two RBI against Loyola Chicago, so what a, what a spot that must be for her to step up and finally get those first two hits and both be you know, important hits in those two games. First and second for the Gators, 2-0 coming. Change up, swung through. Boy, that was nasty, two and one. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. They kind of took a sharp breath in. We're like, oh, whoa, oh no. Like they both, they all saw something they shouldn't have. They now, the disgusting changeup. Put yourself in Mia Williams' shoes. Two balls and a strike, Kilfoyle whips it in. Changeup, cued back to Kilfoyle under her glove. Second baseman Davis charges, throws in rhythm to first for the final out of the inning. Nice play by Rosie Davis, charging in on that cue shot to the right side of the infield. And in the inning, the Gators get no run. Rock and the star pitcher for the Cowgirls in Lexi Kilfoyle is the lefty Scotland David starts it off in this inning. Flares one into left center field, and there's the first hit for Oklahoma State. Scotland David in just her fifth career start with a first pitch single dumped into left. Yeah, Scotland David just serving that the other way. See where this pitch came in from Rothrock. Inside out flare. 
Just flip the hip, serve it the other way. That's a good start here for Oklahoma State. Like you said, that's the first hit tonight. So the Ponte Vedra native gets on. Here's Megan Bloodworth showing bunt, pops it up right back towards the circle. It's gloved by the third baseman Kowalewski for out number one. And Bloodworth's sacrifice does not go to plan. And Bloodworth this year has three successful sacrifices, so you think that would be the play, right? Number nine yeah. hitter in the lineup, lay one down, try to get to the top of the lineup, and a scorching hot Talon Edwards. Edwards walked her first time. One out, still a runner on first is David. Top of the third. First toss, just missed. A hair outside. And this is exactly what we saw from Talon in her first at bat, just taking pitches. She doesn't walk a ton. 14 walks last year. She already has six this year, though. So perhaps showing a little bit more patience in her sophomore campaign. Chops one off the plate, foul. Bounces behind home plate, one and one. So no score, one hit for each side after that leadoff single for Scotland David. Gators and Cowgirls doing battle here on this Monday night from KSP. Have you noticed, Kyle, uh, that the F, the Florida logo behind home plate, no orange trim around it? Yeah, just a blue block <laughs> F tonight. 1-1. One, one. Edwards takes off the plate, 2-1. and one. So just a Smiley Peters, our head groundskeeper, maybe a decision from him, an executive decision, or Tim yeah. Walton maybe wanna, wanted to play a joke on, uh, you know, his, his old buddy Kenny over there. 86 the orange <laughs> tonight. It's all blue, <laughs> Peter Gator. 2-1. <sighs> Off the dish, 3-1. and one. And then, to make matters worse, Gator's wearing orange jerseys. Yeah. Forcing Oklahoma State to play in the white uniforms. Very clean, if I might add. A little bit of a different shade. The Gator orange <laughs> a little bit darker than the Oklahoma State lighter, bright orange. 3-1 pitch from the righty Rothrock to the lefty Edwards off the dish, and she walks for the second straight time. Two on, one out for the Cowgirls here in the top of the third with no score. Yeah, she's just been so good, Talon Edwards, somebody who enrolled early, skipped her final year of high school, hit 328 on that World Series team at 58 starts. 11 doubles, 26 RBI, and now she gets hoisted into that leadoff role this year. It's another lefty in Claire Tim. Cut and a miss, strike one. Outside pitch, came in at 66. And that's one thing that the Gators don't have to counterpunch against Oklahoma State with you know a few good lefty bats. They don't have a lefty pitcher this year other than uh, Olivia Miller. So maybe Olivia gets a look tonight. Oh, one's outside, one and one. Yeah, it's a, it's a short staff, to say the least, for the Gators this season. We talked about it off the top. Three of the four pitchers are freshmen. You have Mackenzie Wooten, who's going to PT schools, essentially doing softball on the side right yeah. now. That's the side hustle for her. 1-1, one, one, and the lefty Tim cuts and foul tips it in the mid of Erickson, 1-2. and two. I talked to Chelsea Dobbins down when I was doing Tim Walton's pregame interview, and I said, you know, Chelsea, you're doing a really good job with this staff. It's all freshmen. You're pitching to a .38. ERH said it's still early. Got a lot of softball to go. One two from Rothrock. Misses outside. It was really fun to watch Chelsea Dobbins, the former UNC coach in her first year as pitching coach here at Florida. I got to see the kids running around finally. That was during the, the rain delays uh, before the games were canceled on Saturday here at KSP. Coach Walton enjoys having the kids in the clubhouse. Two two pitch from Rothrock to Tim. Zips just outside, and the count goes full. Two on, two, uh, one out. Here in the top of the third inning, no score here in Gainesville, and nowhere to put Tim unless you want to load the bases. Rothrock taking a while to look at that Apple Watch on the left wrist, and strikes out Tim. Two down. That's number five for Keegan. Yeah, reminds you a lot, and I don't want to go into the past too much, of when you need a strikeout, Kelly Bornhill would get a strikeout, and, and Rothrock has seemed to do that a lot this year. Another three-ball count. That one just powered it right past Tim for the strikeout. She's already collected five in the start. First toss to the righty, Carly Godwin. Snap throw back to first, not in time. Erickson trying to catch Edwards napping. Brown oh, that was That was close. Let's, let's see the replay on that one. Got the wide angle, but yeah, it looks like the hand just got in there from Talon Edwards before Ava Brown could slap the tag down. 1-0 pitch, righty on righty matchup, and Godwin cuts and misses, one and one. 
No score, top of the third. Two on, two outs for Oklahoma State. And it's Carly Godwin who struck out swinging her first time. Came in hitting 300. Takes inside two and one. Four runs, five ribbies, already three doubles for Carly who at East Columbus High School put up some gaudy numbers in her senior year. We're talking a 731 batting average, drove an 86 and had 20 bombs. That's why she was North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. 2-1. Swings and roasts one towards the Gator dugout on the ground, foul to the left side. You notice that? You have a lot of Gatorade players of the year in this ballpark tonight. Well, Kenny Gajewski is just really good at recruiting around the nation, like players. We're talking the best pitchers from Virginia, the best player from North Carolina. He's got it all at his disposal. 2-2, Rothrock trying to escape the mini jam, and that's laced on a line left field, sending Otis back to the wall, and it is out of here. Carly Godwin with the three-run shot, and the Cowgirls draw first blood. What a swing. First homer of the year for Godwin. And once we see the replay on the television side, had to kind of lean out, dig that one out of the ballpark. This is yeah, that one about a little lower than knee high, too much plate for Rothrock. And that one gets served over Otis. Nothing she can do but just watch that one fly. All of a sudden, it's three zip. Oklahoma State in the top of the third with two outs. How about that for a two-strike approach from Godwin? Reaching out, poking it in front of the pitching lab and left. It brings up the four-hitter, Caroline Wong, who popped to second to end the first inning. First career bomb for Carly Godwin. Putting the Cowgirls in front as ball one is delivered from Rothrock high and tight. Yeah, not a bad way to get your first career homer and on the road at Florida. 1-0 count, Rothrock checks the wrist. And she pinwheels home. I missed in, 2-0. Wong, the Liberty transfer, originally from Paris, Tennessee, led the A-Sun last year with 15 homers, 17 doubles, 51 runs batted in. So much pop in her bat. 2-0, cut on and miss. And you mentioned Montana Fouts earlier, who Lexi Kilfoyle was behind. Well, Caroline Wong got the best of her uh, when Liberty beat number 13 Bama last year. Hit a three-run homer off of Montana. And who can forget Liberty in the regionals? That's popped out of play, 2-2. Two two. So Caroline Wong's team ousting number two UCLA from their own regional last year on UCLA's own field. 2-2 two, two count, two outs. Rothrock trying to respond after giving up a three-run shot. Pitch. Lofted foul out of play right side. See how Rothrock settles in after giving up that home run. Just her second home run allowed this year and of her career. Claps her eyes for the 2-2. Rothrock fires. Inside, count goes full. Wong showing her patience. Formerly Caroline Hudson married Matthew Wong in 2023. Congrats to those two. Payoff coming. Swung on, lifted. Behind home plate, Erickson runs out of room. So the count remains full. Oh, I was waiting for that ball to drop. Sounds like a fan made a catch. <laughs> That's always good. So we'll try the 3-2 again. Wong retired last time with a pop out to Williams at second. Another 3-2. Grounded to second on two hops. Fielded and thrown onto first by Williams for out number three. But Oklahoma State gets on the board first with Carly Godwin. Well, this is the strength of Florida, right? We didn't really know what they would get out of their very young pitching staff, but they knew they had an elite offense. They've hit 12 home runs, driven in 73. What can they do against one of the nation's best and Lexi Kilfoyle? First toss to Katie Kissler in there, low, strike one. And so it's 9-1 and two in the inning for the Gators. Katie Kissler, one of the best at just turning a lineup around. 
four for ten to start the season. Early swing there, nothing and two. Katie had a mad dash Wednesday against Jacksonville. Nearly ended the game with a homer. It ended up almost being an inside the park homer. It ended up being a triple with her on her stomach at third base. It was a chaotic almost end to that game. That's tapped foul, nothing and two. And that would have been her second career inside the park home run. <laughs> she had one against Mercer a few years ago. If it had cleared the fence, it would have been only her second career over the fence home run. And it came oh so close. It went in and out of the mid of the Jacksonville center fielder. 0-2 from Kilfoyle. Zips high, 1-2. So 3-0 Oklahoma State, top of the third inning. No one out, no one on for Kistler, who's from Orange Park, Florida. Her senior year had her coming out party in 2022, hitting 354 helping the Gators reach the Women's College World Series. And she taps the one two foul off the catcher, Wong. So far, so good for Kilfoyle. Two innings, no runs, one hit, one walk. Ava Brown in the second inning had the lone hit, and it was an infield hit at that. One two, Kilfoyle. Readies and fires. Kissler lines it up the middle, base hit. First hard contact off Kilfoyle that was not caught. And Gators have the leadoff hitter aboard in Katie Kissler. That part of the lineup, Nevada, is so crucial because of how it's constructed. Obviously, you look at that nine spot as a double leadoff, and when Kissler gets on, whoever's stationed in that nine spot, you have Kendra Falby, Wallace, Erickson, then you get Murderer's Row right behind it. So if you can get Kissler to have a year that she had two years ago, this is a lineup that has so much depth. She's now five for her first 11, and here's Kendra Falby, who looked to bunt that one and instead just went right through it, nothing and one. Kilfoyle was able to strike out Falby and Wallace the first time around, but now how do these two 400 or better hitters adjust? Kendra Falby comes in with a career 409 average. Cuts and misses, nothing and two. Kendra has just had such consistency over her career. Coach Walton calls her electric, super steady, a worker, and that she loves to work. Has a structured routine and wants to get better. We've seen that so far this season. Oh, two, cut on and miss. Kilfoyle picks up strikeout number four, and there's one down. Much different than the weekend. We saw Kendra have a four for four game against Georgia Southern, two for three against Loyola, 17 of 33 starts of the year prior to tonight, but now has gone down on K's twice. You know, had that half swing in her first at bat, that one swung over the top of it. So one out for Skyler Wallace. First pitch check swing almost gets Jocelyn Erickson. Wallace, the reigning uh, SEC player of the year. And I would venture to bet that Lexi Kilfoyle did most of her homework on these two hitters, Kendra Falby and Skylar Wallace, and maybe that's why she struck them out a combined three times in her first three times facing them. Oh, one just misses off the plate, one and one, because if you're trying to beat the Florida Gators, those are the two you need to get out. You, when you look at the top three along with Erickson, you have 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. That is a recipe for success for a team facing Florida. Kistler on first with one out. 1-1 one, one to Skyler Wallace. At the knees, strike two. Maybe a bit inside, but caught the zone. Gators trailing 3-0. Could use a big hit from a big player. Kilfoyle sends home the 1-2. Wallace swings, laces one off the glove of Bloodworth at short. She whips to second to get the runner Kistler, and there's two down because that ball really should have been caught, but it was just hit too hard. Yeah, that was unfortunate. If you're the Gators, you know, Bloodworth goes right in and out of the glove, scorches it, and kind of just took her eye off of it, and then easily able to make that out at second base. There's nothing you can do if you're Katie Kistler. Ball that probably exited the bat around 100 miles an hour. It goes down as a fielder's choice for Skyler, and Jocelyn Erickson's up. 
the lefty lifts one into the infield, second base side of the bag. Davis makes the squeeze to end the third. Leadoff single for Kistler, but Kilfoyle is through. Experience that has a World Series type feel to it. It's the five hitter, Michaela Wark, who takes strike one from Rothrock. Wark struck out swinging back in the second inning. So we're underway in the top of the fourth, a 3 nothing lead for the Cowgirls. Rothrock gave up the three run homer to Godwin with two outs last inning. Looking to settle back in. She was able to get a ground out to Wong to end the frame after Wong loaded the count. 1 1 now on Wark. Rothrock at 60 pitches. She's not afraid to throw a lot of pitches, Kyle. Go back to that Michigan game. Her first career start, she threw 132 pitches in 10 innings. 1 1 to Wark, dips low. That was one of those real frustrating ones for the Gators because she threw a complete game, you know, one, only one run given up, and you lose two to one in ten innings yep. against Michigan. Two one. Wark takes a strike. Count evens up at two and two. Keegan Rothrock, just such a talented freshman. And only that one hit given up gave, gave up those two runs to Michigan. That two one loss. Yep. And those those runs they came in extras. They didn't score off her in, you know, regulation. 2-2 sent back to the screen. Keegan Rothrock, a three-time Indiana Gatorade Player of the Year. Two years ago was the National Gatorade Softball Player of the Year. Part of this highly touted group of Gator freshmen in this class committed to the Gators back in seventh grade when she was still throwing in the 60s at that point. 2-2 sent out on a line to right field and on the run, Kistler grabs it while backtracking. One down. As a freshman, too, trust your defense. Gators have a really good defensive outfield. You have essentially three players that have played center field at some point in their career. Otis at Louisville, Kendra Falby will be the everyday center fielder, and Kistler has done it in the past when they've switched when Elizabeth Hightower was inside the circle. So she has a lot of experience in center. Rosie Davis tries to bunt her way on. Looks like it may have hit her. Rothrock Field throws to first and got her. An emphatic fist from Jose Shaparo over there at first, and there's two down. It looked like it might have hit her in fair territory. If that's the case, it would have been an out. Let's see, if, take another look on the TV side. No, it, it did miss her. Good job to do the okie doke. But Rothrock, these are a couple of real athletes, two-way players, whether it's Ava Brown or Keegan Rothrock, that are very athletic coming outside the circle. There's Katie Lott with two down, no one on, three nothing Cowgirls. First toss off the fist, foul behind home plate. And that one's going to roll onto the screen and back down eventually. Uh, but speaking of athletes, Rosie Davis got out of the way of that one. She's won two. She was an All-State softball and basketball player in high school. Katie Lott at the dish struck out her first time. And she is hitless since the big blow against UCLA. She had that two-run homer that kick-started the five-run or the six-run fifth inning as that's popped into right. Long run for Kistler, but she tracks it down for out number three. A couple of catches for Katie Mir. North Central Florida dealer of new and certified pre-owned Chevy cars and trucks. First pitch, a strike to Reagan Walsh to get this bottom of the fourth going. 3-0 Oklahoma State here in uh, Gainesville. And if you are watching on the TV side, sorry, no, only David Clark gets the chance to win a Chevy Trax. Walsh takes the 0-1 inside, 1-1. 4-5 and 6 you up for the Gators this inning. Kyle against Lexi Kilfoyle, who 4Ks so far, no runs, just two hits allowed. The really only big hit off of her was that Katie Kistler line drive last inning, but she worked out of trouble without any issues at all. 1-1 one, one drops in for strike two. And she's really utilizing that changeup right now, Lexi Kilfoyle, that has been so lethal. And you look at the key right now, the top three of the Gator lineup, Falby, Wallace, and Erickson, does not have a hit tonight. 1-2 to Walsh. Tapped foul. We've mentioned it several times already tonight, but because this game is in Florida, it's important to mention that Lexi Kilfoyle is a Florida native. Lando Lakes, uh, Florida is her hometown, which is north of Tampa. And so when she got to pitch in uh, 20, I think it was 21, uh, against Washington when she was with Alabama, as that's popped up. Left side. Oh, what a grab by Edwards in foul ground. One down. 
That's a highlight and then some for Talon Edwards. Full extension. On the TV side, we take another look at it. Full dive near the Gator on deck circle along third. Boy, that is some sheer athleticism. That's not even her natural position. She's kind of moved into the infield a little bit this year and moved around. We've seen a lot of players move around in this infield for Oklahoma State. So one down after the pop-up in foul territory, caught by Edwards on a head-first dive to get Reagan Walsh. It brings up Corby Otis, who struck out her first time. It was a freshman All-American left fielder last year, Talon Edwards, playing in the infield this year. 0-1, check swing from Otis. She did not go, says Jose Shaparo over there at first. And that is something that I think Coach Gajewski didn't really know even going into the first weekend, maybe even the second weekend, where everyone was going to be. I don't know if he knows it now. It's just a bunch of moving pieces that he has. And you can look at it one of two ways as the 1-1 comes in. Line right to the glove of Kilfoyle. How about some pitchers fielding their position? There's out number two. Ripped by Corby Otis, but right back into the glove of Kilfoyle. Not even look what I found. She just poked the glove out there and nabbed it. Yeah, that's that's a can of corn. Alex Kilfoyle <laughs> and just go right back to the next hitter. And it's Ava Brown who had the first hit of the game for the Gators in the second inning. Two down. Gators down three nothing as Brown cuts through nothing and one. But last note on the Oklahoma State defense, Kyle, you can look at it one of uh, there are two ways to look at it. Uh, one is okay, this is a big question mark for this team because really no one knows where they're going to be come uh, the end of the season, Super Regionals, College World Series, what have you. A one just inside one and one, or you could look at it in that. The team has a lot of versatility, which is something that the Gators have in common, players who can play multiple positions. Yeah, very similar in that regard between these two, and this is one of those players that is that versatile piece, Ava Brown at home plate. A lot in common between her and Kilfoyle as Brown pops one, shallow center field. Davis camped underneath, makes the two-handed squeeze for out number three. Kilfoyle gets through the Gators in old season now. Look for Florida on the label. We thank those listening on radio, watching on TV tonight for multimedia. Top of the fifth, eight, nine, and one, Scotland David will lead it off left-handed hitter. Rothrock gave up that three-run home run, and that's the difference as David squares to bunt, takes a strike lower inside edge. Three-run home run from Carly Godwin, first of her career, dug it out on a pitch south of the knees over the left field fence. Both teams two hits. The 0 1 to David, right down center. No balls, two strikes. And give David a lot of credit. She started that inning with that leadoff single, inside out swing, blooped in the left center. Then you get the walk to Edwards, and then Godwin delivers the goods. All of a sudden, it's a 3 0 Oklahoma State lead. Rothrock comes set. Here's the pitch. Check swing and a pitch above the letters. One and two. Scotland David, interesting story to her career. Considered retirement at one point. Four knee surgeries. Entered her senior year. Only 20 career at bats. Next pitch in the dirt. Skitters to the backstop. Two and two. Played 13 games last year. Three stars, just 18 at bats, and only two total at bats her first two years. Native of Ponte Beach or Florida. A chance for her to come back to her home state. 2-2 coming. Swing and a miss. David strikes out. That is the sixth strikeout for Keegan Rothrock. And there's one out here in the fifth inning. Rothrock going up the ladder there to get David. And since that three-run shot to Godwin in the third, she's retired five straight. That's what you want to see from your one of your freshman aces. So now that brings in Megan Bloodworth. Popped up the third her first time. 3-0 Cowgirls top of the fifth. One out, base is empty. Right on right, first is just below the knees. Bloodworth like Kilfoyle by way of the Alabama Crimson Tide. He's had a couple of home runs this year, tied for a team best. 1-0. Swing and a lazy pop fly along the third baseline. Around home plate, Erickson to the left of that right-handed batter's box makes the catch. And there's two outs. 
So since that home run, Keegan Rothrock has retired the last six to the plate. And I think for this, you know, another big test for Keegan Rothrock right now, she is passing in a big way, that one big mistake. Here's Talon Edwards, hasn't seen a whole lot to hit, has walked on five pitches, two separate appearances at the dish, takes a strike out of third. That, that was the first pitch strike that took three at-bats to develop because Rothrock has gone to that outside pitch on Edwards the first two times, didn't get it called this time. She nabs that outside corner on pitch number one. 3 nothing Oklahoma State. Two gone bases clear here in the top of the fifth, right on left. Edwards eyes a pitch low and outside. And rolled early last year, Town Edwards. A great season we talked about. Freshman All-American, according to Division I softball. Pitch. Edwards swings, digs it out to short. Wallace few steps to her left, calls ball, ball, ball. And has the catch for the final out of the inning. In the top half of the fifth, Cowgirls go down on sport tonight. This kind of reminds you of, obviously, the very dark times of COVID, but the way things were scheduled during that season. You know, games were just kind of scheduled at the drop of a hat. Here's Ariel Kowalewski, takes low and inside for Kilfoyle, underway here in the fifth. And they're so cool with all the connections between these two programs, Tim Walton, Kenny Gajewski, the celebrations they've had in Oklahoma City. Back-to-back -back national champs. The 1-0 is whipped on the ground to short. Skitters into the glove of Megan Bloodworth. Delivers the first for the out, 6-3. And the celebrations those two have shared together as Oklahoma baseball players with Eric Thomas winning the 94 national title. I mean, those three go way, way back. <laughs> last two meetings between these two, the Women's College World Series, last of which 2022, Oklahoma State won 2-0. Kelly Maxwell was dealing. Gilfoyle's first to Mia Williams, low and away. One ball, no strikes. 3-0 Oklahoma State here in the bottom of the fifth with one out. Kelly Maxwell that day, seven innings, allowed just three hits, struck out nine Gators. 1-0. Ripped off the inner half. Two balls, no strikes. And then you go back to 2019. Samantha Shaw, who was a great player, transferred from Texas A&M. Kind of patented the bat flip and introducing that a little bit more into softball had two home runs against Kelly Barnhill. Here's the 2-0. Zips over the outside corner, 2-1. and one. Thank you, Samantha Shaw, for your service. <laughs> and she was a two-way player. She went a complete game, allowed just one earned run, six hits. Barnhill was stellar as well. Those two hits, both Samantha Shaw home runs. 2-1. Change up, foul. Behind the dish and to the screen foul. Bottom right of your screen if you're watching on television behind the backstop. Jeremy Otter's listening back at the control room. You see Jason Williams with his feet up. Was all-time great NBA player, Florida Gator great, and the father of Mia Williams. You see him right above the Gatorhead logo. I believe that's him. Here's the pitch. Fouled off in home plate. 2006 NBA champ with the Heat, one of the best and flashiest passers in NBA history. He was fun to watch on those Sacramento Kings teams, oh, you know, the man. Kings Lakers rivalry. There's Jason right there. He's freezing right now. 2 2. Change up, whipped in the air to left field. Lot goes back for the warning track, has room for a two handed grab. Williams gives it a ride. Gators two up, two down. How about Lexi Kilfoyle? Just continues to cruise. The Gators last hit was a single from Katie Kissler in the third. Things just starting to look a little easy right now for yeah. Lexi Kilfoyle. It's already her season high in innings and strikeouts. Before this, it was just three, three innings, three strikeouts, and she's already thrown four and two thirds tonight. Katie Kissler again, one of those two Gator hits, takes low, left-handed hitter. Three-nothing Oklahoma State. Two outs, base is empty. Bottom of the fifth. Kissler now the average at 455. Kilfoyle fires. Twists the hips, takes a strike in her half. If Katie Kissler can continue her start to the season, that adds just another dimension to the skater offense, which is already loaded from top to bottom. Right now the Gator is being shut out. Here's the pitch. Down and in. 
two balls and a strike. And you know, this was the problem at some points for the Gator offense last year. Coming, coming up against aces, I remember Shanice Dels of Arkansas was just really tough for the Gators. And obviously the best pitchers are going to bring their A game against any team. 2-1 changeup splits the plate for strike two. So it's good to see the Gators get a test against a pitcher of a Lexi Kilfoyle caliber uh, in game 10 of the season. Yeah, this is a preview of what's to come. Gators will start SEC play before you know it. Tuscaloosa against the Alabama Crimson Tide. 2-2, darts low and away. Three balls, two strikes here with two gone bases empty in the home fifth. Lexi Kilfoyle, last time she was in a circle, two-thirds of an inning against LSU in that seven to six loss. Allowed two earned runs. Payoff pitch, change up, whack foul, home plate. I'd say some of the best at bats tonight have come from the nine spot and Katie Kistler. Yeah, she has really strung those at bats together. But you mentioned that last outing for Lexi that she had the loss against Georgia, gave up four runs in that game. Uh, but then you go back to that UCLA game and three hits, just uh, three innings, just one hit. So she's been up and down and she's been up tonight. Payoff. Change up, hesitant, voiced in the air, and lands in right field for a base hit. That was a swing in slow motion for Katie Kistler. Loops that out to right field on the changeup. Two out knock for Katie. Second hit of the night has two of the three Gator hits. That ball was moving in slow motion too. She just waited on it, poked it out there, and it just slowly fell to the outfield grass. And there's nothing Davis or Tim could do about it going in or out. The lower half discipline that it takes to hit a pitch like that and turn on it for a base hit. Well, the Gators turn the lineup over here, trying to do damage with two gone. Infield's in, swinging a bouncer back to Kilfoyle, stabs it in the circle, flips overhand to first for the final out of the frame. So the Gators threaten, but do not score in the inning. In the frame, no run. Who has shown maturity from the way she bounced back from that three-run homer. Taylor Anderson is a pinch hitter here, hitting from the left side. First one to her, fades to the box and takes a strike. He's hitting in the two spot for Claire Tin, who struck out twice, looking and swinging in the first and the third. So Anderson will get some hacks here, at the top of the sixth. Next one to her, shortens the bunt, and takes low for ball one. Anderson picked up a hit in her first career at bat. That was against Utah State back on the 10th of February. Uh, it's her seventh appearance, and this is only her second at bat. And looking to make it two of two. 1-1, one, one, high and away. According to Kenny Gajewski, along with Tia Warsup, two fastest players on the team. Like Nevada mentioned, that one hit against Utah State, the last at bat. It appear in the LSU game. Chokes up on the bat, 2-1. Flinch is at it, fading through the box, strike two. Three-time All-State player with multiple district championships from Dripping Springs, Texas. Two hits for the Cowgirls tonight. One of those left the ballpark, and that's her difference. 2-2. Two -two. Cut on a miss. As Anderson, the pinch hit spot, goes down on strikes. First time she's struck out this year. So that number two spot in the lineup, Nevada, has the hat trick. Yeah. We'll see who hits uh, next in that lineup, if, uh, in that spot, if there is anyone. First pitch comes in to Carly Godwin. Takes a strike. Or takes off the plate, rather, 1-0. You see the numbers for her. That three-run home run was the first of her career, now eight RBI. Infield, drifts back. The 1-0 is whack foul along third. Here, Kenny Gajewski. I mean, that's a foul ball, but you can even see her potential from her swings, even the swings that don't exactly go to, you know, over the fence. That one just roasted on a line, foul towards the camera well, and just a ferocious swing from Carly. Pitch. Swing and a pop fly back in our direction. The netting in the way or else I would have made that catch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we all know what happened to Jacksonville. Okay, no one knows what happened we to Jacksonville. We had a foul ball going back to our booth. And boy, it was coming right at us. And I yes. ducked out of the way. But your first instinct was to protect the gear. That's correct. One, two coming. Just off the inner half. 
Skylar Wallace in a squatted position wanted that call at shortstop. That would have been Rothrock's eighth strikeout. She has been stellar tonight. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a smash on one hop to third. Kalaluski toss across for the out. You can't really tell how many freshmen are on this Gator defense. Kalaluski at third, Williams at second. They all look really capable. And speaking of infielders, Avery Gels is in the game at first base. Yeah, it's a defensive change. Gels now playing at first. Look around, and that is the lone defensive change. Ava Brown comes out, and Gels now at first. Caroline Wong, first pitch to the righty, misses for ball one. Saw some action in the pitching lab a second ago. Not sure if that was Brown, but could be. Could be the reason for the change. I want to dive into just how good Oklahoma State has been since Kenny Gajewski has taken over. 1-0. Wong takes off the inner half. Two balls, no strikes. Four consecutive Women's College World Series, which in itself is absurd. They've been in the NFCA poll each of the last 279 games. That's since the 2019 season. Here's the 2-0. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Medium deep right. Kistler on a back pedal makes the catch. And that will do it. So Rothrock continues to cruise along here. And that is now 7-8. That's nine consecutive retired, right, Nirvana, for Keegan Rothrock. So she continues to keep it rolling. Blemish has retired 10 consecutive Oklahoma State backs. Skyler Wallace will lead off. There's a rally in the Gators' bones. This is the inning to do it. Bottom of the sixth inning, down three. Zip. First of the reigning SEC Player of the Year is low and outside, 1-0. and Tim Walton says that Skyler Wallace is one of the players that rises to the level of top competition. This is her time to do it against one of the best teams in the country, number eight, Oklahoma State, number six, depending on which poll you look at. 1-0, dots the lower inside corner. One ball, one strike to Wallace. Wallace struck out looking in the first, reached on a fielder's choice in the third. As Lexi Kilfoyle is told, a five-inning gem, allowing three hits, no runs, a walk, and four Ks. 1-1. Swing and a one hopper back to Kilfoyle has fielded her position perfectly tonight. Throws the first for the out. Ended last inning with a bouncer back from Falby. Starts this one with a bouncer from Wallace. I mean, you saw the line out from Corby Otis in the fourth inning. She has been perfect when it comes to defending tonight. You can't ask anything else of your star pitcher. Gators have out hit Oklahoma State three to two. Have nothing to show for. Here's Jocelyn Erickson, 0 for 2. First one taken high and in. 3 0 Oklahoma State, bottom of the six, one out, nobody on. Erickson lined out to third in the first, popped out to second in the third. Came in hitting a scorching 433. The co SEC player of the week. A 1 0 flutters high. Everybody knew in spring practices in the fall just what they were getting from Jocelyn Erickson. You've seen it right out of the gate already. An SEC honor for the Gator catcher. 2-1. Over inside edge strike. Erickson doesn't like the call. 2-1. Talked really about uh, Coach Gajewski's ability to, you know, recruit nationally. Well, Tim Walton, very good at recruiting on the West Coast. Jocelyn Erickson, Arizona Gatorade Player of the Year in 2022. You know, obviously coming over from Oklahoma. 2-1. Blisters the mitt low and inside. Three balls and a strike. But think of all the great Gator players to come from California and the West Coast. <laughs> That's why the Gators make that annual trip out to California every year. So many of their players reside on that coast. Their families. 3-1. Erickson takes a change, and they just punched her out for strike two. <laughs> <laughs> Chokes on you, William Lopez below. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Someone was going for the spotlight there. Oh, he's going to hear it. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes, with one out. Here's the payoff. Change up. Line foul on first. Yeah, no way that Jocelyn Erickson lets, uh, lets him ring her up again after that one. <laughs> you know, he's just testing it out. Yeah. 
It's like muscle, muscle memory, right? If you're an umpire, you got to spend, at least this is what I would do, I would spend nights in front of the mirror practicing what my punch-out call is going to be. If you have yeah. a weak punch-out call as an umpire, you know, that's not good. You need you need that Savannah Bananas level punch out call. Theatrics. Do the worm Rico and all. Palazzo, naked gun, three two. Swing a high chopper to third. Field it on the short hop. Edwards, brilliant play on the throw across for the out. Boy, how about the sparkling plays? Talon Edwards has made at third. The diving catch on a little pop fly and foul ground of Reagan Walsh. That was back in the fourth. And then this play, two or left on the short hop with the momentum going to second and a sidearm sling to first for the out. Such a difficult play, proving, I, you know, she could catch a ball in the air. We knew that because she was an outfielder. Yeah, she could play infield too. She could make the play going to her left at the hot corner. Here's Reagan Walsh, change up strike down the middle from Lexi Kilfoyle, continues to twirl the shutout. Gators have not been shut out this year. Down three nothing, two outs, bottom of the sixth. Reagan Walsh reached on a four pitch walk in the second, and it popped out to third in that aforementioned diving catch from Edwards in the fourth. Next one to Walsh, low and outside, one and one. Kilfoyle, if this result stays the same, will be a team best fourth victory this year, and this her eighth appearance. Preseason was picked by Softball America as a top 40 player, number 38 in the top 100. 1-1. One, one. Rips off the outer half, 2-1. and one. Obviously, Oklahoma State lost a lot when they lost Kelly Maxwell, but Lexi Kilfoyle was the one to lead the team in ERA and complete games last year, so they still have an ace even though they lost one. 2-1. Walsh takes a changeup outside, 3-1. And a lot was made when Kelly Maxwell made that decision to go to Oklahoma. Kenny Gajewski was pretty blunt about it publicly. He just did not like it. It's one of the teams they're trying to beat on a consistent basis. And Here's the 3-1. Walsh bounds this foul along third. He said, yeah, it hurt. And, you know, he got demolished for his comments on Twitter when he essentially said that that kind of hurts her legacy at Oklahoma State. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean, he, he's also said, like, he was just kind of telling the truth. Like, it's just never going to be the same now that she pitches for Oklahoma. 3-2 is swung through for strike three. Lexi Kilfoyle continues to dominate. Five strikeouts, pulls the weekend, had a complete game. One hitter against Jacksonville. Do a combined one hitter opening night against Oregon State. Here's Michaela Wark. Takes a strike from Ava Brown down the middle. Wark 0 for 2. Has struck out. Brown, the reigning National Gatorade Player of the Year, got the start at first. That's why we saw Gells play at first. There are an, there is another defensive change for the Gators. Here's the 0-1. Zane's just outside. Reagan Walsh, who was in the DP spot, is now playing at first base. And for the Gators, the rest remains the same. So it's only been first where we've had a merry-go-round as the next in the dirt from Brown, two and one. Three nothing, Oklahoma State here in the top of the seventh. Three run home run from Carly Godwin. And this surprise Monday night affair. Next one to walk, swung through to strike two. We weren't expecting it, but we're here for it. We're happy y'all decided to hang with us on the TV or the radio side. Yeah, we're just about everywhere tonight. Brown rocks and fires. Change up, lifted in the air. Medium deep right. Kistler, two steps in, makes the catch. I think Kistler can get rid of the shades tonight. <laughs> just past 7.30 local time. As Wark flies out, she's 0 for 3. But you've just seen, and you said it off the top, you're going to see a pitcher's duel tonight. Yep. And that's exactly what we got. Just one mistake is the difference. Rosie Davis stands in, takes downstairs for ball one. Now, a lot of credit goes to Oklahoma State in getting people on base before the big blow because solo homers aren't a big deal really for a pitching staff, but when you give up the three-run bombs, those hurt. 1-0. Low and inside, two balls, no strikes. And on the flip side, Lexi Kilfoyle has been really good. Closing in on what is her fourth winning decision, trying to shut out the Gators. Something that has not happened all year. Pitch. 
Change up, center cut strike. This will be the second top 25 win for Oklahoma. Proved them to two and two against NFCA top 25 teams. Two one. Downstairs. And before this, it, the SEC was looking like the Achilles heel for Oklahoma State. Their only two losses against Georgia and LSU, both in Clearwater. But they've come to Gainesville and they've played their brand of softball. Swing and a high fly ball, shallow center. Falby angles towards her left, makes a two handed grab. Falby can also keep those shades in the dugout. <laughs> There's two outs. If you're looking ahead, I know you all are, at least if you have orange and blue glasses. It will be five, six, and seven slated. Otis, Brown, and Kowalewski. See how that shakes out. Kilfoyle tries to go the distance and slam the door here. Lexi McDonald will hit in the seven spot for Acadia Lot. Silo, Oklahoma. One for five to start her year. Left-handed hitter, slight open stance. Rounds first, rips the outer edge, strike one. Oklahoma State a three-nothing lead. Top of the seven, two outs, base is empty. Pitch, foul back to the screen. McDonald, just a sophomore, played with the Anna Maria Aquanauts of the FGCL this summer. Uh, Kenny Gaiesi squad had a ton of players who played in the American Collegiate Leagues. Uh, there was a, another a catcher in Audrey Schneidmiller in the FGCL with the Lakewood Ranch Rodeo, and three players, uh, including Katie Lott, that played in the Music City League. Next one, Sean Smith is not sure where. One and two. Brown trying to work a one, two, three, seventh in relief for Rothrock. Gets a sign she wants, rocks it in. Change up, looped on one hop to short. Extra hop for Wallace. Rhythm toss to first. And the inning is over. Gator pitching has been stellar tonight. Last 13 retired by Gator pitching. I believe my math this time is correct. As Katie Lott re-enters, will be in left field after being pinch hit for. So the defense remains the same. Right on right, and Otis takes underneath the hands, ball one. Well, to this point, like Nevada said, that Guilfoyle has not pitched longer than three innings this year. If you want to find her last complete game, you got to go back to the postseason last year. 1-0. And the basement low, two balls, no strikes. I was against Oregon in Supers. Oklahoma State took care of the Ducks, swept them, went seven, in that game against Oregon, gave up just one run. 95 pitches, far and away a season high. 2 0. Right down center. 2 and 1. That whole pitching by committee thing that we were talking about, yeah, that, that didn't happen tonight. Fooled us. Pitch 97 comes on to 2 1. Otis takes just below the knees. Need two on to really make Oklahoma State sweat here and bring the tying run to the plate. Also, if I'm looking for last complete game shutout seven innings, that was Baylor last year on the 25th of March. 3-1. Change up low, ball four. Meanwhile, Cassidy McClellan was the one on deck in the Ava Brown spot in the sixth spot. She ripped a extra base hit. Over the weekend, first extra base hit a double to right center, and now she's going to get a chance to swing. Yeah, they track just about everything sports science-wise. They say that some of the hardest swings have come off the bat of the freshman, Cassidy McClellan. She's done a lot with her four at-bats, three hits in them, three ribbies, a double, and if you're the Gators, you're just hoping that kind of string of success continues. So it's McClellan, native of Lakewood Ranch, Florida, also the home of Avery Gills. And as the Gators watch on from that dugout, yeah, it's nail biting time. Watching on TV, Kendra Falby in the top step of that dugout. Gator fans really getting into it now. Corner infielders in, three nothing Oklahoma State. Right on left first pitch, right down the middle. 
of Lexi Kilfoyle. And her next would be a 100th of the night. 3-0 Cowgirls and a three-run home run in the third. Runner at first is Otis. One strike pitch. Blown away. Line for Kilfoyle in those six innings. No runs, three hits. That's just the second walk. Five strikeouts. Pitch 101. Check swing foul and a change. Rolls to the backstop. One and two. This is why you come to Florida. Moments like this as a freshman, Cassidy McClellan, part of that number one freshman class, part of a state championship at Lakewood Ranch High School. Awaits the one two. In the basement low, went to the slap that time. Fading through the box, count even. They have a wall of fame over at Lakewood Ranch High School. TJ Gallows, of course, on there, a longtime coach who is the father of Kinsey and Avery Gallows, who have both played for the Gators. Well, Cassidy's on there too. 2-2, slap foul off to the left. A really good player at her time at Lakewood Ranch. And now, I mean, you see the transition from high school to D1 playing for the Gators. And I mean, it seems to be seamless for her at this point, obviously in limited at bats. Played one season with Avery, freshman year of high school. Two balls, two strikes, runner at first, pitch. Caught on a miss. Kilfoyle earns the strikeout and a big first out here in the bottom of the seventh. Six strikeout tonight for Kilfoyle. Ball just dipped and dove away from the bat of McClellan. Great pitch from Kilfoyle. Now here's Ariel Kowalewski. 0 for 2 is flown out to center, grounded out to short. Runner at first. First one to her, late hack and a miss. Gators trail 3-0 here in the bottom of the seventh, one out. On deck, leave Bailey Goddard. Mm -hmm. will hit in the eighth spot for the Gators, barring a possible ground ball double play or any double play of that sort. The 0-1 rips down center. Gators now in a tough spot, 0-2. Tim Walton watches on from that third base coach's box. Two strike pitch. In the other, ba other batter's box, trying to get Kowalewski to chase. I mentioned the repertoire for Kilfoyle, that heavy drop in the 70s, that changeup's been so lethal tonight. Belt I set. One, two. And the basement low, two and two. Such a litmus test game for both of these teams. First meeting since 2022. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a looping liner in back of third. Corkscrew's foul. So far, two impressive at bats by two Gator freshmen. A pinch hit at bat from McClellan. Did strike out and this from Kowalewski fighting off a 2-2 pitch. And making Kilfoyle sweat it out a bit. I know we're in the business of wins and losses, but a lot of positives tonight for Florida really on both sides. It's been a great game. Pitcher's duel, 2-2. Two -two. Change up, rolled to short. This could be two. On to second for one, turn to first. Double play. And that's your ball game. Oklahoma State twirls a deep P to end it. And the Gators shut out for the first time this year. Lexi Kilfoyle complete game.